how to edit a landscape image using Adobe Lightroom. You asked for it, so here it is. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post regular photography tutorials. I like to share tips and tricks. Occasionally I do gear reviews and sometimes I do videos about editing images as well, just like this one. Now, recently I uploaded a video in which I took you through an edit using Lightroom of a surfer. Now that video got some great feedback and lots of really positive comments. And also a lot of you requested to see a follow-up video, but this time you wanted to see me edit a landscape image. And because I read the comments and I care about what you guys want to see next, this is that video. Now, if you'd like to have a go at this for yourself, but you don't have Lightroom, don't worry, because there is a free trial version that you can download and play around with. And I've included a link in the description below this video. Now, the image that I've chosen to edit in this video was taken on the beach at a beautiful spot on the Gold Coast called Corumbin. If you're a regular viewer, you may recognize it because I have been there a few times and I have featured it in previous videos. Now, before I get into the edit, I just would like to say that this video is kindly brought to you and sponsored by Skillshare. Okay, let's get into it. So this is the image I'm going to edit, again taken at Corumbin, great spot. This is taken just after sundown. Uh, what I like about this image is the moodiness of it, and I really love the clouds in this sky. Uh, this is a long exposure, uh, 13 seconds, and I was using a uh, neutral density filter to darken the sky. Um, okay, so let's get into the develop module, so I click on develop. And over to the right, we have my histogram and all my different tools and things that I can play around with. Now, always a good place to begin is to scroll down to the bottom or near the bottom and go to what is called lens correction. Here's where Lightroom will correct things like distortion or maybe vignetting. Okay, gonna scroll back up to the top. Um, and uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna crop the image. So I'm gonna hit the crop um, tool, which is up here. And this brings up my, uh, my grid. This is based on the rule of thirds, this grid. And all I've got to do here is drag a corner and then I can move the image to fit. Now, what I want to do is I want the, um, the horizon to be on the top third line, the top third horizontal line. And then I've got to decide how much of my foreground I want in. So, Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that composition wise. So all I've got to do is hit the return key on the keyboard. And I think that's okay in terms of composition. Now the next thing I'm going to do is work my way through some of these tools. Now here's white balance and here is the temperature, which you can slide to the left if you want to cool your image down, slide to the right if you want to warm your image up. And if you're not sure where you started, just double click and it takes you back. Now this image was taken after sundown as we're getting into what is often called the blue hour. So the image does look very cool, but I kind of like that. I mean, I could warm it up a touch if I wanted. In fact, I might do that just a tiny bit. I don't want it to be overly warm. Um, I like that, that's good. Okay, gonna go down to exposure. Now exposure slider will make, if I go to the right, the image brighter, over to the left darker, double click to take it back. Now in terms of exposure, looking at the histogram, there's not a lot going on over to the right. Now this is where the highlights should be. So this histogram is indicating that the image is a little bit dark. So I might just raise the exposure a tiny bit and you'll see the histogram slide over to the right. Now, I don't want it to be too bright. Um, I'm gonna bring the highlights down now. The highlights is going to affect just the brighter parts of the image, which is mainly here, of course, the sky. Now, the big difference between exposure and highlights is exposure is gonna raise the exposure of the image or reduce the exposure of the image globally, which means it's gonna affect the whole image. Whereas the highlights and also the shadow sliders can be used to just affect the highlights, which would obviously be in the sky, and the shadows may be on the rocks. So let's go back and do that again. Let's just increase the um, exposure a touch. And because I don't want to go too crazy, I've brought the highlights down. If I take them back, you'll see. Okay, so that is, to me, that sky is a bit too bright. I want to bring those highlights down. Okay, that's cool. Now, I'm going to raise the shadows a tiny bit. I want to bring out some of the detail in the rocks. 
okay? The backslash button on the keyboard will give you a before and after, so you can go back and check your progress. And I'm, I'm quite liking that, but I might just actually bring the overall exposure down a touch. Okay, that's good. Now, before I go any further, I just want to take a moment to tell you a little bit about Skillshare, who have kindly sponsored this video. They've got a very special offer for you, my viewers and subscribers. I've always been a very creative person and I've always enjoyed arts and creative outlets, be that music, photography, creating videos for YouTube or working on the Photo Genius website. And because I believe you never stop learning, I'm always keen for new ideas and inspiration. So for me, Skillshare is the ideal platform. An online learning community with thousands of inspirational classes, Skillshare includes topics such as graphic design, illustration, music, photography, web design, and much, much more with no ads. I've been checking out YouTube tips from MKBHD and you can too because for viewers and subscribers to this channel, Skillshare have a very special offer. The first 1000 people who use the link in the video description will get one month's free trial of Skillshare. So make sure you don't miss out. All you need to do is click on the link below this video and join me and thousands of others to improve your creative skills with Skillshare. Right, now we're gonna to go to presence. Now this is where you can do things like sharpening. There is actually a separate sharpening section further down, but this will probably have more of an impact. It works um, particularly well if you've got images that have lots of textures like we've got on the rocks here. Now there is actually a slider called texture. And if I go to the left, it will soften the image as you can see. And if I go to the right, it will um, sharpen certain parts of the image, but if you push it too far, it can look quite nasty. So I'm only going to increase that a tiny bit. Same with clarity. If I push it right to the max, you'll see what it does. It makes things look unnaturally sharp. And if I go all the way over to the left, it's going to make things look unnaturally soft. Um, so I'm just going to increase the clarity a tiny bit. Now dehaze, I'm going to increase, and it usually has a pretty good effect on the sky. Now there you go. See what it's done? So dehaze slider has really emphasized the, um, the, the detail in the sky there. Um, slightly at the cost of the rocks getting a bit darker though. So I am gonna push the shadow slider up a bit more just to compensate and bring out that detail. And that so far is looking pretty good. Again, backslash button just to look at the before and the after. So the before and the after. Now scrolling down to the two sliders below, uh, vibrance, if I go to the left, will reduce the vibrancy of the image and uh, sort of give you a black and white look. Over to the right will increase the vibrance um, and make things look a little bit too unnatural. Um, so I'm just gonna increase the vibrance just a tiny bit. Saturation will do a similar thing. It will desaturate the image. If you go to the left, it'll look like black and white. If you go to the right, it will oversaturate, which again will look really quite nasty. Um, although the colors are pretty cool. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of saturation, not too much. And uh, yeah, so far looking really, really good. Now I don't think the image needs a great deal more to it, but I am actually gonna add uh, what is called a vignette. Now a vignette effect will darken the corners of the image. And what that will do is it will draw the eye to the center of the frame. Now vignetting is something that some people don't like, some people do like. Um, I like it to an extent, so what I'm gonna do is, is go to vignette, I'm gonna go here to amount and go down, and you'll see what I mean, it will darken the corners. Actually, I'm gonna push it to the max, just so you can see the extreme. Now that's, to me, that's way over the top. So I'm gonna add a touch of vignette, but not, not too much. Okay, yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna go back and tinker with a few things. Um, in terms of the, um, the, the vibrance, I'm just going to actually bring that down a tiny bit. And I might just bring the overall exposure down just a tiny bit more. Okay, that's, that's looking really, really good. Again, backslash button just to check progress. And let's go back to vignette. You know, I have no problem with going back and redoing things a few times. Just add a little bit more to that. Now the F key is a good keyboard shortcut. If you just want to view the image without the distractions of all the other stuff, press the F key to toggle. 
sometimes it's nice to uh, just look at the image and take a step back and just see how, how you're progressing. Now there are plenty of other things of course that you can do in Lightroom but at this stage I'm pretty happy with the image and I don't really think there's much more I need to do although I did just notice what looks like a bit of um, sensor dust or so I'm going to enlarge the image and yeah I'm not sure if you can see it so I'm going to blow this up a bit bigger but there is a blob here which is definitely going to be dust on the sensor so what I'm going to do is pick up the spot removal tool go over here I can resize using my mouse if I want to and I'm just going to click on it here and that will get rid of it. What it will do is it will look for a similar looking part of the sky and clone it. So that looks pretty cool. Just going to click on that to get rid of it and drag the image around just to see if there's any more little spots. You know, digital cameras are prone to attracting dust when you're changing lenses. So, oh, there's another one there. It's going to click on that to get rid of that. Um, yeah, digital sensors um, do attract dust. So when you're changing your lenses on your camera, try and do it quickly and try not to do it in dusty environments or outside on a windy day. I've just spotted another one just here. So I'm just going to pick up the tool again. Click there. It's gone. See, super easy. Just click on the tool again to, uh, to get rid of it. Go back to the image. And uh, to be honest, I think I'm done with this. Um, I'm just going to just going to go back and revisit one more thing. I just don't know if I've overdone it a little bit with the dehaze tool. Just bring that down a tiny bit. Yep, I'm done. Now if you really love your landscape photography, I have made another video that you might want to check out. It's all about the best filters for landscape photographers. I'll put a link up here, so if you want to check it out, what you've got to do is click on the link and it will take you straight there. Now if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up because it does help the videos get noticed. And I love reading your feedback and comments and you can leave those down below. Now if you would like to support me and the Photogenius channel here on YouTube, check out my Patreon page. Again, there's a link in the description below. Below. Patreon members do get some cool benefits. I want to say thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.